What's going on, gardeners? It is Sunday, May 30th, and it is Memorial Day weekend here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, we are going to begin a documentary of sorts. We are going to see exactly how much a fig tree can grow from total dieback in the winter to the end of the growing season. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. I live in zone 8A here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina and in typical average winters, fig trees are hardy to my zone and they suffer little to no dieback, especially when they're well established. However, last winter was the perfect confluence of events for disaster to strike. All the way until after Christmas, we had near record warmth consistently in December, and we were seeing upper 70s to even 80 degrees all the way beyond Christmas. Then, once the calendar switched to January, it was like a switch flipped. We had an ice storm, we had an 18 degree low, we had a snowstorm, and we had a 14 degree low, all within about two to three weeks of those upper 70 to near 80 degree temperatures. And as a result, my fig trees got smacked with their annual minimum when they could not go properly into dormancy, and they all suffered terribly. The conditions were so sudden and so rough that I took my container fig trees and I pushed them against the east wall of my house and I covered them in tarps so the heat of the house that radiates overnight would keep them warm and I would be able to keep any frozen precipitation off of them. And I even had a bunch of those trees die back to the ground as well. All in all, between my fig trees in ground and my fig trees in containers, I had over a dozen fig trees completely die back to the ground. So on a video in April 10th, which I will link to above, I showed you how I had to cut a bunch of my fig trees in ground that were well established completely down to the ground. Almost all the wood above the ground was dead and the dead wood was starting to get attacked by boring pests. So I had to get all of that dead wood out of there. So a bunch of them had to be cut down all the way to the ground, but the ones that still survived and had significant amounts of living wood above ground, they all still had to be cut back significantly as well everything was badly injured. Something like this can be very defeating. However, when bad things happen, oftentimes opportunity arises. Now the good news is all of the trees are alive, so they are coming back. And this gives us a unique opportunity because these trees were fairly well established in ground for a few years and they're coming back. So now we get to see just how vigorous fig trees are. They are one of the fastest growing trees, let alone fruit trees. So we're going to document this and we're going to see exactly how big a fig tree can grow in a single season after getting killed back to the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take footage from the April 10th video where I cut them all down to the ground and I am going to overlay that over the names of the fig trees so you can see where we're beginning as a baseline. The first tree that I'm going to overlay is the Col de Dom Blanc fig tree which had total dieback and only a green bud visible at the time of the April 10th video. My Italian 258 fig tree also known as the I-258 fig tree which only had a green bud visible. My Del San Juami Grand fig tree, which was less established, that had to be completely cut down. And my Col de Dom Gigantina fig tree, which was also less established and had to be totally cut down. So here we are on May 30th. This is my Col de Dom Blanc fig tree. And I will place a side-by-side -side of the April 10th shot along with this one right here so you can see just how far this fig tree has come along. Here's my Italian 258 fig tree. This is one of the most vigorous fig trees that I own. And as you can see, it's coming back very strongly. You'll notice my Col de Dom Blanc, I thinned it to a single trunk. I'm going to show you how to do this in this video. So that's why I chose not to thin it just yet, but I need to do it right away because I need all of the energy to focus into one single trunk to maximize growth. Here's the Del San Juami Grand fig tree. I already thinned this to a single trunk to try and concentrate the energy so you can see the side by side before and after. And then here is the Col de Dom Gigantina fig tree. This tree has been thinned to a single trunk as well. You can see the side by side before and after right here. Now we're going to begin thinning the I-258 and I'll show you how to do this. It's very simple, especially when this wood is green. Most of the, uh, the green wood will just pull right off. If you give it a tug, it pulls right off the trunk, no problem. So I'm going to snap these all off at the base and I'm going to snap off the 
uh, the small ones first. And the goal here is to wind up with the strongest main trunk, the one that is going to be the dominant trunk, and that is also centered in a good spot to be trellised on my trellis that I have constructed right here. And this right here is the trunk I selected to be the single main trunk of the tree. It was by far the largest and the most dominant, so it was a pretty easy decision. And it's also fairly well centered, so I will be able to tie that to my trellis uh, no problem. And I'm going to take those other um, main trunks and branches that I removed. I'm actually going to dispose of them. I'm normally a chop and drop guy, but they already were visited by boring pests earlier this year and they're kind of in a weakened state. So I don't think it's a good idea to spread them all over the ground right now because uh, decaying wood kind of can give off pheromones that can track those kinds of pests. So I'm going to get rid of them. Then we will check in later once these trees grow a little bit more and we'll do another update. Well, it's July 23rd and it is time for another fig tree update and things are coming along very well. Now, right here, I have my Col de Dame Blanc fig tree and it's just about as tall as me. So it's, uh, I'm only 5'6 and this looks to be about my height, maybe an inch or two shorter. So this is about at the five and a half foot mark. Uh, the reason why it is growing up as a single stem like this is because I pinched the growth tip right here because I didn't want it to grow up anymore. I wanted it to branch out more and it didn't seem to really want to do that. It's branching out at the tip. So I'm just going to let it go, but it is recovering well and it is loading up with figs and overall it looks great. Then over here, I have my Italian 258 fig tree, and this looks even better. The vigor of this variety is just unmatched. It is my most vigorous tree. As you can see, it already has both lower cordons that I was able to cordon uh, on my espalier trellis. It looks great. I even have one upper cordon that I was able to espalier as well. So this tree is probably over six feet tall. It's towering over me pretty well. So really impressed by the way this has grown. And again, this is loaded up with figs as well up top. It has less figs because it's putting so much energy into vigor. The reason why I have bags on all of the figs is because I manually hand pollinated them because I want to save some seed and see if I can make some seedlings out of this tree. And you can see how well everything is coming along. The Smith tree has been fully espalier back to almost its original condition. Same thing with the Col de Dom Noir fig tree right here. Then we have the Col de Dom Blanc that I showed you. It is putting on really great vertical height. Then we have the Italian 258, which I've almost been able to reestablish all of the espalier cordons. We have our Borgeso Blanca Negra. Uh, this is back to its original glory, just about. And my Martinenka Ramada, looking better than all of my other varieties, surprisingly. The vigor on this one has been outstanding, and it is loaded up pretty nicely with some figs. Our year-old fig trees are not coming back as quickly because they don't have quite the root mass and they're not as established. But my Col de Dame Gris looks very good right here. It is coming back slowly but surely. The Golden Dawn fig is looking very, very good. Very happy about that. My White Madeira number one took forever to bud back out but it is finally coming along. I need to select whatever the strongest sucker is there so I can pick the dominant one and let that take back over. Then we have my car fig right here. That looks pretty good overall. Uh, then we have the two that got killed down to the base. We have my Del San Juami Gran right here, which surprisingly has a good amount of figs on it. And we have the Col de Dame Gigantina, which also has a good amount of figs on it. And they look to be probably about five feet tall each, so very happy with that overall. It's September 18th, and we're going to do our final fig tree check-in for the year. These are going to be the max heights of all of the fig trees because I pinched off the growth tips and I removed some of the figs at the top of all my fig trees to help and encourage the bottom figs to ripen before the weather starts getting cool. And the progress of each tree has been incredible. Here is my Col de Dame Blanc tree, again, which was killed down to the base. It is towering over me. It must be seven to eight feet tall, and it is absolutely loaded with figs. Look how many figs are all over this tree. It is doing great. The recovery is absolutely astounding. But even more astounding is my I-258 tree right here. Again, this was killed down to the base. This tree was so vigorous, I was able to reinstall 
all four cordons. So the entire espalier setup is, is complete. I have four branches that are defined and looking perfect, and the tree is still, it must be 10 feet tall. It's absolutely enormous, and it would have kept growing if it weren't for the fact that I didn't pinch, uh, pinch off the growth tips. And look how many figs are on this tree as well. Again, just a few months ago, about what, four or five months ago, this was died back to the ground as a stump. And this is just amazing. And the same amazing thing happened with my even younger fruit trees that died back to the bottom of the ground. My Del San Wami Gran right here and my Coldadam Jagantina right here. They were just dead to the ground a mere few months ago and now they are towering over me at least eight feet tall and they are loaded up with figs. Not only are they each loaded up with figs, but some of them are actually in the ripening phase as we speak. In fact, just recently, I picked and I had a taste test off this Del Sanwami Grand fig tree right here, and I have two more figs that are in the swelling and ripening process. So the amazing thing is, not only did all of these trees recover to eight to 10 feet tall and load up with figs, but I'm eating off of them this year. So now I'm gonna take you on a fig tour of all of my trees that are in ground. And again, all of these suffered some amount of cold damage over the winter. And I'm gonna show you just how far along they came. And this one right here is my Smith fig tree. The Smith probably took the least amount of cold damage. And as a result, it is doing great. I have been eating figs off of this tree for close to a month now. And as you can see, it is loaded up with figs. Some of them are in the swelling and ripening process. That's why I have some bags on them. The next fig tree is my Col de Dom Noir fig tree. It is loaded up with so many figs that they are actually struggling to ripen because there's just too many on there, I think. So I pinched off the growth tips and I removed some of the top figs. I'm hoping I will be able to get uh, some figs by the end of the month while it's still really hot out because that's when you get the best quality figs. Then right next to this is the Col de Dom Blanc. Again, you can see down there, that's one that was uh, killed to the ground. And this decided to grow up pretty much as a single stem. Uh, so I'm going to have to really cut this back in order to reestablish the cordons next year. But you can see the insane amount of fruit set that is on this tree. Just, just amazing. And uh, none have ripened yet, but I think they are going to start soon. This is just naturally one of my latest figs of the year. The Italian 258, uh, this is probably my most vigorous fig tree of all. And again, it died back to the ground last year, but it was so vigorous, I was able to reestablish all of the cordons and I have crazy amounts of figs that are forming up top. One of them did ripen, but it was destroyed by the rain. I think I probably will get a few figs off this tree. Um, but again, this is a larger, later fig, so I think it may wind up uh, being a small harvest this year with better things to come next year. My Borgeso Blanca Negra didn't take a lot of cold damage, surprisingly, and as a result, I've eaten a few figs off this tree. It's doing very well. It's set a ton of figs, uh, just like it usually does. Um, it's not the most vigorous and not the most prolific, but it's still a really good uh, tree with outstanding flavor. My Martinenka Ramada probably took less cold damage than any of my in-ground figs. And despite it being my latest fig, it was the first of all of them to produce some fruit. You can see the crazy amounts of figs that are up there. They're all beautiful. This is a variegated type fig. And it's not just that one branch. It's pretty much all of them. They all have a ton of figs all on the cordons. And it's looking great overall. Now I will take you over to my newer fig trees that are over here. This tree right here is my Coldadam Grease tree and it died down to the base. As you can see, the trunk is, um, you can see how I had to cut down the trunk. This was one of my last figs to come back. It took a long time for it to bud out and recover, but it did. But because it was so late, it hasn't set many figs. It has two figs on there. Um, we're probably not gonna get anything off of this tree this year. But that's okay because it is alive and all my other trees are doing well, so it's not a huge loss. This tree right here is my Golden Dawn. It suffered very little cold damage, so the tree itself is looking great. I only got maybe a handful of figs off this fig tree. However, one of them ripened so well, it may have been my best tasting fig of the year so far, which is surprising. Um, there still are a few figs on there, but... 
Um, this is a very new seedling from California, so it's not well adapted yet. And I think it's going to take a few years for it to really get used to my very different non-Mediterranean climate. Then next to that, we have my white Madeira, which I was afraid wasn't going to come back. This did not bud back out until probably late May. It sat forever, and I thought I may have lost the tree. There was just a little tiny bud that sat by the, uh, the trunk for months and didn't do anything. But it did come back. And as you can see, it actually is full of figs. So I don't think many of them, if any, will ripen because the tree got such a late start. But I'm happy to say it has recovered and it will be back, hopefully in full force next season. Then we have my car fig tree. It took some cold damage, but it has mostly recovered. Uh, this is another one of those California figs that's probably a seedling. So it's not very well adapted yet. Um, it didn't put out a ton of fruit this year, maybe because of adaptation and maybe because of the cold damage. I'm not quite sure, but overall it's doing well and I expect, I expect it will probably do better next year if we have a reasonable winter. You can see there's still our figs on it. Then we have the Del San Juami Gran, one of my best figs in terms of taste. Um, it has figs ripening on it. It is loaded up with figs. It recovered from full dieback just beautifully and same thing with my Col de Dom Jagantina, one of my largest figs. Delicious, uh, no ripe figs off of it yet, but I think it will get there because it is doing so well. So I am just astoundedly happy with how everything has recovered. Everything looks good. And as long as we have a decent mild winter, I think we're gonna have a really good fig season next year. I had a few of my container fig trees die back to the ground as well. This right here is my Violette de Bordeaux. It died back and took a long time to come back. It has decided to come back in full force, but as a bush. So I will have to select some leaders off of that, probably one or two for next season. Then this one right here, which is a little bit harder to see, this is my Black Madeira. It also died back to the ground again for the second time, but it did come back and it is loaded up with figs on this one branch and this other branch is doing pretty good as well. So Black Madeira, very slow grower, but we should get some ripe figs off of it despite the total dieback. And just as a quick fig seedling update, because some of you have asked, uh, this is what my fig seedlings are looking like after about one year since I planted them. Every single one is very healthy and doing great. You can see I have the drip irrigation that's on, helping keeping them moist because it's a hot, dry day. And um, it's going to take a little while for these fig seedlings to actually bear fruit, I think. They have to adapt, but two of them actually have borne fruit so far. This fig seedling right here is a cross between Del San Wami Gran and Salib, and it, it has a couple of fruits right there, as well as a couple of fruits up top that is starting to form. You can barely see them in there. Um, so very impressed that this was able to fruit first season. We won't know if it's a male or a female or persistent until the fruits ripen. I'm guessing it's probably a female since it's set fruit right away but we'll find out if the fruit holds and is edible we'll actually have our first viable a common female fig, or it could drop and we'll have to toss it. Then this fig tree right here is a cross between Sango de Drago Rosso and Salib. It has two fruits on it right there. Uh, that's my second fig seedling that was able to fruit. Again, it's probably a female since it fruited the first season, but we won't know if it's going to hold the figs without pollination until they decide to swell and ripen. And that same fig tree is also forming a bunch of figs up top too, so this might be a pretty prolific one. And here we are at the end of September. This fig tree is 10 feet tall, from total dieback to 10 feet in one season on this very young fig tree. How was I able to achieve this incredible growth in only six months? I was incredibly successful for two main reasons. The first reason is culture, and I explained the perfect fig culture in a previous video that I made entitled, How to Grow Fig Trees with Extreme Vigor, and I will make sure to link to that video above in case you want to watch the full thing. But the short answer is this. You want to make sure that you plant all of your fig trees in full sun so it gets plenty of energy throughout the day. You want to make sure that it has a very thick, compost and mulch mat in order to give them lots of organic matter to grow them in and also to keep them well fed and you also want to plant them high in a raised bed or on a mound of sorts that way all of the surface roots can grow along 
that compost and mulch layer because the trees will be more vigorous if they can send out a lot of surface roots. And the second reason is my fertilizing schedule. I will make sure to link to a playlist above that teaches you exactly how to fertilize fig trees because I change my strategy based on the season. Fig trees are one of the heaviest feeders you will ever find. They're very difficult to over fertilize, but they're very easy to under fertilize. So I made sure to give these fig trees everything they needed to grow with extreme vigor and fruit after only a few months from total dieback. And remember, that fig tree over there was not a fluke. These fig trees right here, which are even younger, grew back to be just about as tall in the same season as well. And that right there is how I was able to grow my fig trees from total dieback to 10 feet tall, loaded up with fruit in one single season. So it was a little bit of work tracking all of these trees, but I really think it was worth it, just so you can see how incredibly vigorous and dynamic these trees are and how fast they can not only grow, but fruit for you as well. This is why figs are such anchor fruit trees in my yard and I rely on them so heavily. They are so easy and so much fun to grow. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video informative, helpful, and entertaining. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you have any questions about the products that I use for real in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand that video description and click the Amazon storefront link for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, you ready to go inside? Dale, get your toy. Get your toy, Dale. Get it. Yes. Good boy. Come on. You have to clean up after yourself, buddy. Come on. Let's go inside. Good boy, Dale. You are so smart. You're so smart, my buddy. Now you can show everybody just how smart you are. Dale, get your toy. Good boy. Smarty pants.